Well, God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. It is so good to be with you one more time just to give God a praise. Just to give God the glory. Just to give his name honor. Just to worship him in spirit and truth. It is, it is such an honor. It's a privilege. Um, glory to God. That's what we put on this earth to do. And that is to give God glory. Give God praise. Give God honor. Give him the glory that is due to his name. Um, he's worthy, right? He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be glorified. Listen, could you just join me in prayer just for the need to pray? Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Nazareth, we thank you right now for all that you've done and what you're still doing. We thank you, Father God, because in you there's life. Father God, we thank you right now because simply because, Father God, without you, we, we would not have made it. Um, if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, I know I would not have made it. I, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, some of us grew up in um, single parent homes. Some of us grew up in, uh, in neighborhoods that were we seeing death, drugs, destruction, disease, uh, sexual in the windows, uh, drive-by shootings, uh, 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 all kind of things. Glory to God, some of us had guns put out on us. Yeah, some of us had seen murders take place. Some of us right now seen some things that we have not even yet even got over. We've seen our friends um, die. We've seen um, our family members pass away. We've seen um, friends of ours carted off to jail. We've seen family members carted off to jail. We've seen right now in the name of Jesus all kind of things possibly uh, that book shot in the name of Jesus that we could see. Some of us, Father God, didn't see none of that when we was growing up. Some of us, Father God, just raised, Father God, just a normal home, two-parent home, uh, that white picket fits, uh, nice schools, clean air. Uh, uh, some of us just didn't have to go through certain things that others had to go through. That doesn't mean that they have not been through anything, though. Because they might have been struggling with depression, might have been struggling with drug addictions, might have been struggling with things of low self-esteem. All kind of things could happen in this world. But one thing is for certain, the same God that blessed the man and brought out the man that grew up in the bad neighborhood is the same God that raised up the man and brought out the man that grew up in a good neighborhood. Right now, in the name of Jesus, because all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. And so we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Look at me in Luke chapter 7. Because last time I was with you, I said I was going to go. We were talking about how the centurion servant, last time I was the centurion servant, got healed just by speaking the word only. And glory to God, we was in Luke chapter 7. Last time I was with you, we talked about how the man came and, and, and the centurion servant needed to be healed. And Jesus was coming to the house to heal him. And the man said, don't come up out of my work on the word and just speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. Know that mercy. Isn't that good to know that you have a God that can speak a word to your situation? And it stops. One word from God can change your life. One word from God can change your direction. One word from God can change your daughter, change your son, change your marriage, change your job, change your career, change your mindset. Change your situation right now. Speak change into your situation. I speak the word of change to you. I want to. God's going to change your mind in that thing, and then He's going to change your circumstance in that thing. For right now, in the name of Jesus, how the Lord saying that it has accomplished the thing that I I'll set it out to accomplish. And now you're stronger, you're wiser, you're better. You're you're in the name of Jesus. You're more uh, loving, more giving, more merciful, more understanding. <laughs> Sometimes we go through things because. We don't judge other folks of what they're going through. And we don't say to other folks that they ain't saved and they ain't good enough and they ain't holding up and blah, blah, blah. We don't say stuff about other folks. Oh, he divorced. She don't did this. All that stuff we talked to get all against these, all these people. And lo and behold, life has a way of making you go through the same thing that you don't judge other folks about. Some pastor that you don't judge and say he ain't saved because he quitted his church. I look at you. Somebody you don't judge and say they ain't right because they don't have an abortion now. Watch you. Somebody you talking about that against them, talking about they don't been to jail and all that. And now look at you. That's why you have to be so careful when you're speaking on something in a situation that you've never been in and you know nothing about. It. <laughs> it, see, see. Everybody didn't have Sarah as a wife in the Bible. Some folks had Job's wife. 
Everybody didn't have the faithful no man like Joseph in their life. Mm -hmm. Some people had a David for a little bit. <laughs> I know a cool lot about shit. You can act like you don't know what I'm talking about if you want to. Glory to God. See, that's why you have to watch yourself when you're on the, on the Facebooks and all that. Because you may not say too much, but folks are looking. <laughs> folks are looking. Folks are talking. God bless you. That's why I thank the Lord for the things I've been through. I stay humble. I stay humble. Glory to God. I stay, I stay in the face of God. Luke chapter 7 around verse 11. Let me show you something that happened in the word of God. It says, now it happened the day after. The day after what? The day after we were talking about in the previous episode of Jesus Christ healing the satirian servant. This is happening the day after. Because my God is God of the honor court. He'll come back stronger the next day, baby. And he's got some more word for you. He got some more power for you. He got some more anointing for you. He got some more mercy for you. Watch what he does this time. Now it happened the day after that. He went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him. And a large crowd. My God. Jesus always had a large crowd with him. Because when Jesus walked the face of the earth, he was like a movie star. He was like a rock star. Here's what I'm saying. If Denzel Washington was to walk down the street right now, and as soon as people recognize who he is, it would draw a large crowd of people. If Will Smith was to walk down the street right now, it probably draw a large crowd or a large group of people. If, if Chris Rock or if, if Jay Z or if if, 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 if who else we got out there? Uh, uh, who are the new stars? A Natalie Portman's or uh, oh my God, be Jordans. Uh, everybody be down. Uh, a lot of women be down. Uh, uh, I'm just just kidding. But listen, if if anybody if anybody of any kind of famous athlete or actor or singer was just just walk down the street right now. A large group of people get out their cell phones. They forget to chat and they're going go live. People try to ask for autographs. It would be bananas. It would be crazy. That's how Jesus Christ, when he walked the face of the earth, people, he always draw a large crowd of people because of what he was doing, because of what he was saying, because of what he, the words he was speaking, because he was healing centurion servants, because he was healing folks with issues of blood, because he was healing folks and lifting them up from the grave and saying, Lazarus, come forth, and, and a dead man has been dead four days, had to get up. He would go into Jairus' house and to heal Jairus' daughter. He would do all these wonderful things. He would walk on top of water. He would beat the winds and the waves in the sea. He would go to a wedding and change water to wine. He would do all these things, and now folks would want to see him. He would go into a, a cemetery where a man who couldn't, who was possessed with a whole lot of demons and nobody can tame this man. Nobody can talk to this man. Nobody can lay hands on this man. Nobody can even say anything to this man. But as soon as he meets Jesus, the demons come out and all of a sudden he's closing in the right mind. Of course you're going to follow Jesus Christ. You should be following him today. When you go to church, who are you really going to see? Are you going to see the preacher? Or are you going to see the anointing that God has placed on the man of God? So are you going to see the preacher? Are you going to see the, what they got on? Are you going to see the choir? Are you going to be entertained? What are you doing when you go to church? What are you doing? What are you, what are you encountering when you go to see the man of God? What are you doing? The Bible says that a large group of people and their disciples followed Jesus, and when he came near to the eighth gate of the city, behold, now when the Bible says behold, the Bible says behold means um, look at this, take heed to this, learn from this, because there's something that's getting ready to happen that we are getting ready to learn from, or that we're getting ready to say, wow, that's an amazing. The Bible says, and, 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 and behold, a dead man was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Wow, this woman is going through a tremendous pain. She's already a widow. And now her son has died. And now she's going to be left all alone. My God. The Bible says that sometimes you have sorrow on top of sorrow. Sometimes you have a problem on top of a problem. Sometimes when you just, just get out of a test, here comes another test. Sometimes in the name of Jesus, when you just paid off one bill, all of a sudden you forgot about something. And all of a sudden now your account is in the negative. Now all of a sudden you got problems on top of problems. Sometimes you just got to... Tires flat, your fists are flat, now the engine cranking. Your engine fits the engine not a not all that's leaking. Your fists are all not all of a sudden now you need to sometimes it just go on like that. This woman was a widow and she had only one son and he had died. But what can we learn from that? Because <laughs> I said behold means that 
something that can be learned from that situation. So what can we learn from that? And when he came into the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother. And I feel this in my spirit. I gotta stop here. Wow. There's someone right now. You're thinking about reconnecting with someone. But the person that you're trying to reconnect with is now your enemy and not your friend. And you don't even know it. Don't go into that situation and think it's going to just be the same as it was before. Because it is not. It's been some years. It's been some time. And now, that person that you're trying to reconnect with, when you left them, you was thinking uh, at the time that that was the right thing to do. But they were expecting you to show up in certain areas and you didn't do it. And now you're trying to reconnect. Hoping and thinking that it's going to be the same as it was before, and it's not. Be careful. In Jesus' name. Let me show you something real quick. And he came near to the gate of the city. Behold, a dead man was carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. Because sometimes you can go to a large crowd. And sometimes in that crowd, there's people who genuinely care for you. And also in that crowd, there's generally people who want to see you mess up and want to see you feel and want to see your destruction. She had a large crowd following her also. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Now watch this now. The word compassion means here sympathias. And sympathias is a Greek word that means to have a fellow footing of. A fellow footing of. To have compassion, to love. It literally means putting yourself in that person's situation. That's why Jesus is so effective. Because when he goes into a situation, he don't go in judging. But he goes in putting himself in that situation. See, some of you, the reason why you can't minister effectively, and even though you have a big edifice, even though you have a big crowd, even though perhaps you may even have a nice lighting, Perhaps you may have a nice big microphone and uh, what so on and so forth. And you, you got a few members and uh, good, good. But if you're going to minister effectively, meaning like Jesus did, you're going to have to have some sympathy. You're going to have to have compassion. In other words, what I'm saying is, if you're going to preach and have signs following, and signs, I mean, the gifts of the Spirit of God, you're going to have to have compassion. The only way that the gift of healing and miracles and, 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 and signs and, and, and wonders, the only way that the gifts of uh, prophecy and edification and exhortation, the only way that the gift of tongues and, and the interpretation of tongues and, and, and different things uh, uh, of the sort and gifts of the Spirit to be manifested, they have to be manifested through love. If you don't have love, then don't expect no gifts to be manifested. You can have church. You can have a crowd. You can have a choir. You can even preach on the gifts. But in order to see them manifested, there has to be compassion. You're going to have to start putting yourself in that person's situation. You're going to have to start loving somebody just as much as you love your son. So now it becomes not your daughter is sick, but our daughter is sick. Not your husband is sick, and not your wife is sick, and not that you need money, and that you need your bill paid, that we all need to be helped. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we're going to have to start loving in order to see the gifts of God be manifest. The Bible says that Jesus, when Jesus saw this woman in this situation, he had compassion on her. And he said to her, do not weep. Whoa, that is a powerful statement. Because here's how a good sign that you'll know. That you've gotten a real word from God. Now, I'm saying not a real word. I ain't been getting a real word of God. Now, I ain't saying that. Here's what you, uh, a good sign that you know that you have gotten a word coming straight from the throne room of God. And here's the message that you will get from God when you know that it came straight from the throne room of God. And it is this is that the word that God speaks will not fit your situation. My God, and here I'm gonna have to speak on tongues on that one. Excuse me for a few minutes. Rabba do kole ma she rabba. Rabbo kola ba yama. When is the last time you got a word from God that doesn't fit your situation? That means here's this woman. This woman is a widow. Her son has died, and Jesus Christ is showing up and saying to her, Do not weep. Whoa. 
What do you mean, do not weep, Lord? I mean, uh, uh, my house just got repoed. Uh, uh, they, they talking about taking my job. My, my daughter is wavered and dating a man that she shouldn't be dating. Uh, my son acting like he want to go another way. Uh, I ain't going to leave it alone. Uh, uh, my, my, and in the bush, uh, my finances are funny. What do you mean, do not weep, Lord? Um, uh, 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 they talking about throwing me out the church. Um, uh, my car won't start. Um, um, the rent is due and I ain't got a check yet. Um, uh, what do you mean do not weep, Lord? Um, in the name of Jesus, they're spreading rumors. Uh, my, my mother is against me. My father is against me. My sisters are against me. In the name of Jesus, I'm almost 50 years old and I'm still struggling because I wasn't raised by a father and he didn't want me. In the name of Jesus, what do you mean do not weep? Well, if Jesus ever tells you do not weep, he must be telling you this, that weeping man do it for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Lord have mercy. I, I, I wish I had me a trip. <laughs> if he gives you a word for your situation that should cause you to weep, and yet he shows up and says, do not weep, then he's telling you that weeping man do it for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Look at somebody real quick and tell them it's morning time. Give me about 2.5 people who know that it's morning time. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is morning time. I got a call, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. In the name of, let me, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Then he came and touched the open coffin. Then he came and touched the open coffin. This woman's son was in an open coffin. You know what an open coffin is? Everybody sees the situation. And everybody sees this man being dead. And I often ask myself, why does God let everyone know your business sometimes? <laughs> because everybody was there when your, your divorce happened. Everybody was there when, when, when they came and took your furniture out of the house. Everybody was there when your house burned to the ground. Everybody was there when it seemed you um, get laid off and seemed you um, lose the wife and seemed you um, get diagnosed with cancer. It seemed like everybody knows. Uh, when some negative is going on in your life, everybody knows it. And I ask myself oftentimes, why does God allow that? Well, I figured something out. Here's the reason why God allows an open coffin in your life. It's because the same people who sees this woman's son being dead, it's the same people who are going to see him get up. I feel like preaching. Hold on for a minute. Hold on for a minute. The same folks who see your marriage get torn apart, it's the same folks who are going to see you reconcile. The same folks who, um, in the name of Jesus, are your enemies. For God's getting ready to prepare a table in the presence of all your enemies. The same folks who clap secretly and, and laugh when you, in the name of Jesus, glory to God, when your church fell and when your when you lost everything and when they thought you was dead and when you thought your life was over and the last same people who seen you going through all this mess are the very same people who are going to see God lift you up in the name of Jesus. You are to shout in the midst of the enemy. It was the same folks who laughed at you. Some of these folks were friends. Some of these folks were family members. Some of these folks were husbands. Some of these folks were wives. Some of these folks were children. Some of these folks were parents. Some of these folks were close to you. But right now in the name of Jesus. He, then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. <sighs> and he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And he presented him to his mother. The man that was dead sat up in his own coffin and began to speak. In the midst of your coffin situation, Rise up in it and begin to speak and say, I will magnify the Lord at all times. In the midst of your coffin situation, rise up and say this, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I mean, let me just die. Listen, if it's a word, then I must have did it. And if not, then I wasn't with it. Stay committed, please.